Now we come to the extrinsic semiconductor. Okay? In in an extrinsic semi extrinsic semiconductor. As we have told that this is a doped doped semiconductor and we can do the doping in two ways. I can either either dope it with 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 pentavalent atoms pentavalent atoms like like phosphorus okay and you'll shortly understand why this is called n type semiconductor okay this is called n type semiconductor while if you dope it with trivalent atoms trivalent atoms okay we'll again shortly see why it is called p type semiconductor okay now i'll again try to draw that matrix where this is my silicon atom this is silicon 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 yes i it is something like this right silicon now what happens what happens so it continues right it is not that it ends here that's why i have drawn this so it continues on all sides okay now see what happens suppose you have doped a, a phosphorus with five and with five with five atoms and and it comes and say occupies this place okay it comes and occupies this place now what happens it it comes with five electrons right it is pentavalent so maybe one of the electrons is here another is here another is here another is here now what happens to the fifth one it is here hanging somewhere here right it is there only still attached to the phosphorus but with with what has happened the phosphorus has already uh, completed its octet so it is there but it is kind of not required any longer by the phosphorus <coughs> atom correct so this has got so so this is there so so this this electron the fifth electron is there but has got a very small energy of ionization that means with a very very small amount of energy it will jump into the conduction band with a very small energy it will become conducting you understand so what happens is this is my valence band this is my conduction band this is my conduction band now what happens i have got an electron the no, the normal electrons they require this much energy to jump from the valence to the conduction but this electron this one electron per atom is such that is such that it will jump it will it is one is such that it will jump with a very small amount of energy this will leave it okay that energy is somewhere around around 0.01 electron volts okay so so one electron per atom i have one electron per atom one electron per atom has one electron per atom has has 
a very small ionization energy ionization energy this one okay this is that electron of the order of about 0 0.01 electron volts so while other electrons will require the whole eg to cross from the valence to the conduction one one this electron will jump just with 0 0.01 electron volts so the so the whole impact of adding a pentavalent atom is like introducing a valence band band just just below the conduction band Point zero one eV and this is called the donor energy level this is called the donor donor energy level ed you understand that huh? now what happens just with a small amount of just with a small amount of energy this immediately jumps into the conduction band and starts conducting okay now what happens so we have an excess of electrons is it not now mind this when this electron has gone into the conduction band it does not leave behind a hole hole was what if it would have vacated a, a, a bond it is not vacated a bond it was actually even otherwise an excess electron which has suddenly jumped but it does not leave a corresponding hole behind you should understand that okay so now in the conduction band i have so many of these electrons that they encapsulate that they overwhelm that that they outnumber the holes by a huge 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 amount and what happens many of these electrons actually fall into those holes and fill them okay and they'll fill those holes so what happens many uh, there is a majority of electrons right there is a there is a majority of electrons in the conduction band in the conduction band n e being very very greater than n h okay many of the holes get filled up by the electrons filled up by the electrons okay so the majority careers in an n type conductor is electrons, electrons which are negatively charged hence the name n type understand why not get a conductor hmm? why not get a conductor why not get a conductor that that I'll, I'll i'll make make you understand okay thus the majority carrier in a in a pentavalent atom doped doped semiconductor <coughs> is so the majority <coughs> carrier in the pentavalent atom doped semiconductor is the electrons which are 
negatively charged. Hence the name N type semiconductor. Correct? We get the point. That's why they called N type semiconductors. And since N E is very, very greater than N H. So I E is also very, very greater than I H. Okay. Now in an intrinsic semiconductor, N E was equal to N H and we define N E into N H is equal to N I square intrinsic semiconductor concentration. Okay. Now even though this gets unbalanced that they are no longer equal, but their product still remains equal to N I square in a, you know, N type semiconductor that still remains the same. Okay. Okay. They still remain the same. Okay. We understand? So they still remain the same. So, so, so this still holds. So it still holds. Now I'd, I'd like to pose a question to you. What will be the, what is the overall charge of the semiconductor, N type semiconductor? What is the overall charge of an N type semiconductor? Negative? No. Still neutral. Why? It was originally neutral. You doped it with phosphorus atom which is originally <coughs> neutral. Then how can the sum become say negative, positive or whatever charged? What has happened though there are more negative charges in the conduction band, but whenever an electron has left this, when, when, when an electron leaves this, this phosphorus atom, it, it puts a positive formal charge on the phosphorus, is it not? No, here, here, in matrix, in this matrix, even if this has gone to a conduction band, that means it has left this phosphorus atom, then for every electron that has left this phosphorus atom, I have got a positive charge at the phosphorus, is it not? So this you are seeing here, but in the valence, if you come, in the valence band, you will you'll find a positive, uh, 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 not a hole, not a hole, but a positive charge. Okay, it is a positive charge. So that is why it will be? Neutral. We understand. We understand why it will be neutral. So, the overall charge is still the overall charge of this, the overall charge on the semiconductor, the overall charge on the semiconductor is, is on the semiconductor is still 0, still 0, okay. Now there was a question, if you, if you started with the low conductivity material and you are gunning for, you are actually trying to go for high conductivity, then what was the fault with the metal? Why didn't you use the metal, okay? Why don't you use the metal? If, if we have taken a low conductivity material and doing everything to actually increase its conductivity, you have a very high conductivity metal with you. Why we don't use that is, 
in metals, you will not be able to control the flow of electrons. Okay, we will soon see when I form a diode, I form a transistor, I form a thyristor. Okay, what happens? I gain control over the flow of electrons. So there, on one end I have got conductors the, 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 uh, where, where I do not have the control over the flow of the electrons. On the other hand, I have got insulators where, where you, you have full control over the flow of electrons but there are no electrons actually, right? So there is no current. This falls in intermediate, this is an intermediate material where where I have been, I will be able to increase the conductivity and apart from that, I will be able to gain the control over the flow and that is the, that is the cutting edge about them, okay? That is the cutting edge about them. Now, I would like to highlight one more thing. Once this has happened, it does not mean that the thermally generated electron hole pairs are not there, holes are still there. So, so the thermally generated, the thermally generated electron hole pairs, generated electron hole pairs are still there, are still there. You should not lose sight of that, okay, because that, that will come in handy. Therefore, does the holes are the minority carrier are the minority carrier okay so the holes are the minority carrier you should not lose sight of that they are still there they are still helping in conduction they are the minority carrier here the holes are positively charged holes are positively charged yes Holes are positively charged. Positive. Uh -huh. when, they, when it's a vacancy. Here, here it is normal ionization. You have you have pulled an electron, it will become positively charged. That is not due to a hole. That is, there is no vacancy. Hmm? Holes are positively charged entities. Because it was pentavalent. Hole is a vacancy. Okay. Why? We, uh, see, there is a quantum <coughs> mechanical proof of why holes act as positive charges. But but I'll I'll tell you the the diagram that I draw earlier. You saw that suppose suppose this was my direction of field. Okay. And and you saw that when electrons were flowing in this direction, hole. Sorry, electrons will be flowing in this direction. Then holes f flow in opposite direction. Now, if they flow in opposite direction, they are actually behaving like positive charges. Do you see that? Why I said that they will be positive? They are actually, they, but this is a crude way of understanding, but still it, it's, a, it's a foothold that, that you will be getting. That they are moving in the same direction as the field and that is the nature of positively charged ions. Positive charges, they flow in the same direction. Correct? Fine. 